All right, everybody. Hi, and welcome to the official Body Spartan Podcast. My name is Gabe Tuft. I am the founder of Body Spartan. Today, I am joined by the one, the only, magnificent, wonderful, awesome, super sweet, ripped, shredded wife of mine. First lady of Body Spartan, Priscilla Tuft. Man, what a hell of an intro, right? I'm telling you, this thing is just Flattered. getting better every freaking week. You better believe it. Yeah, so guys, this week we are talking about how to lead anyone. Basically convincing them to listen to you. And this is one of the biggest, well, how can I say this? It's a good thing to know. Not to be abused and not to, um, what's the word? Help me out here. Not not to be abused, not to try to trick someone, but literally... You and know, not to like lord over them. Yeah. That's not what this is about. At Body Spartan, what, what do we say all the time? Lead, inspire, motivate. And we're talking about leadership because that is what our tribe is all about. You don't just download the information, change your life and keep it to yourself. No, you pay it forward because contribution is one of the most important of the six human needs. And that's what we're talking about today. How do you lead someone so that they actually listen to you? Hey, speaking of contributing, this week I contributed by taking my daughter up to the snow. So Priscilla could have, what, 36 hours of undisturbed work? Undisturbed bliss, what? Huh? Bliss. What? <laughs> I mean, those of you that follow us on Snapchat, you know things got a little crazy around here, but hey. I did my best to stay on track with work. No, yeah, it was I, awesome. I saw the snaps so as Priscilla's, you know, going from laying on my side of the bed, eating all the food, and then suddenly she's starting the R6 up. I'm like, dude, WTF, Whiskey Tango, man. <laughs> Come and stop me, baby. Come and stop me. And oh, by the way, uh, for those of you that do follow us, you heard me say R6, not R1. R1, rest in peace. We had a nasty little incident with her and uh, she got totaled out i do get her back this week though she'll be a full track bike uh by the time i'm done with it which is pretty cool i mean most of it's most of it's cosmetic so we gave her a little name a new name she so you is, gave her a name i gave her name phoenix yeah let me tell you something guys i know not everybody out there is a motorcycle fan like me but you guys know i'm a sport bike nut i've been on a 600 cc bike since i was what 22 when i had the cbr f2 mm -hmm. when you and i used to ride been a hot minute it's a lot slower than a thousand. <laughs> it's a lot slower for my heavy ass. Wifey likes that speed. Yeah, well, I mean, it still goes fast, but it just takes a lot longer to wind up. So I'm missing my R1. I didn't realize how much of a pig the R the old R6s were too. They're like super wide. I'm, I'm <laughs> spoiled, such a man. Pig. So here's what I did. It really is. It's so wide compared to the R1. Well, the plan was to get the track bike, get the R1 back, get it fixed, but they totaled it. So I'm like, okay, uh, I bought it back as a salvage for 1500 bucks. So I got a brand new 2017 R1 that's not so pretty on the outside, but runs great as a track bike. I think she looks good. Well, she'll look even better when I get the track fairings on her. So yeah, we're going to rip her apart, make her a, a true track bike, put slicks on her, you know, the whole nine yards. She's a pretty girl. She likes me. But she winks when I walk into the garage. She's like, take me for a when ride. I got, when I found out they totaled it out, I'm like, okay, well, I'll just buy a new bike. So I ordered a 2018 R1M. And for anybody that doesn't know what that is, that is Yamaha's like cream of the crop factory track bike. It's a step up from the R1. It's the, it's like the race version of the R1. So it's got 200 horsepower, uh, all sorts of crazy electronic suspension, and she's sexy as a hell. She's a carbon fiber with like blue. So that's going in the garage. And now my thing was, I was going to sell the R6, and suddenly Priscilla's like, oh, I might want to ride it. I don't know. I just got the vibe. I got the, I got the Iggy. When you, when you brought that home, I was like, you know, I could see myself on that little pig. On that little pig? Well, speaking of little, little pigs, pig. why don't you tell me what you've been riding? Oh, my daughter's 50. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. Well, that was my idea. I thought it was a great idea, actually, because now you, fun. you got an idea of what it feels like to be on a bike. And then actually, I think in about a week or two, we've got the uh, motorcycle course for you to take. If, yeah. it, if it's not raining, then we'll be good. So that's what's going on, guys, in the Body Spartan off scene area. And I'm supposed to have a track day coming up, but I don't think it's going to happen. I just saw that it's going to rain at Thunder Hill, so I'm going to just skip that. So we get you for Easter? No, that's Sonoma Raceway. Oh, so you are April, going for Easter. So April 1st, guys, I will be at Sonoma Raceway, a.k.a. the old Sears Point. 
And I will be having a track day there with a couple of buddies. It'll be pretty cool. And I will be in the audience throwing eggs, not hard boiled. You won't be in the audience. I will decorate them first and I will throw eggs as you. Okay. That, yeah, you won't, yes, you won't no, be there. I, no, I might. <laughs> well, let's talk about the six different types of leaders and how this applies to you. And, and the reason that it applies to you is that we're trying to groom you and we're trying to point you in the right direction. And being a leader is innate. In almost everyone, it can get squashed at a young age and you can see it at a young age too when it sticks out. Most of you listening will probably have the ability to be a leader or you have the drive to possibly be a leader. And here's why you are creating a story that's powerful on your journey. You're creating something tangible that people out there can relate to. And your story is unique. Yes, we've all lost weight, gained weight gone through physique transformations, but your specific story, your why, your reason is unique. And that, when placed properly, can be a lighthouse for people to see. Powerful. And I want to go back to what you just said, where you think that everyone might be able to. I am thoroughly, 100% convinced that any human being on the face of this planet can become a leader. You're not born a leader. Nobody is a natural born leader. I mean, yeah, we have people that veer towards it, people that have a tendency, but leadership is a learned behavior. I read a book called 24 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Okay. And it went right along with Think and Grow Rich. Can you take your foot off my chair? Well, your chair's squeaking. Your chair squeaking, baby. No, it's yours. Look. Oh, it's mine. (laughs) So it goes right along with Think and Grow Rich and it's influence. It's learning to influence people. And we have different ideas of what leadership might look like in an attractive way. I wanna talk about high school. You know that coach? You know the coach? That I kind of leader? All those tell, tell me about the gym coach. Tell me about the gym coach. Because this is a type of oh. leader. This is one of your first oh. exposures. Tuft, Tuft, get your ass out here. What are you doing? Why'd you miss that ball? Keep your eye on the ball. Let's go. Come on. Go, go, go. You want to make something yourself? Let's go. You got to see that ball. Why'd you let that ball? Why'd you drop that ball? You're better than that. There are so many different ways to lead people. Fuck me. And (laughs) a coach, a coach type of leader is a facilitator that connects a team member to a united goal. And of course, they have their different. I, I just think of the PE coach for some crazy reason, but it's their goal to help them dig for weaknesses and for strengths. And this is great for somebody who's a rookie. This is great for somebody who doesn't have much leadership as far as parents or somebody who's just getting into this for the first time. Everybody should have a a PE coach or a high school coach or a basketball coach or whatever. But digging for these weaknesses, digging for these strengths is also really good when you're getting started in business. I believe that every entrepreneur should have a business coach when they're getting started if they're not digging for those answers themselves. Gabe and I dug and we found the answers ourselves, but we got coached through YouTube videos, through reading books. So coaching is one type of leadership. You know, speaking of coaching, I've been seriously giving some thought to actually opening up some of my schedule to possibly taking on one or two people a month to coach. And this is something that both of us have actually made the commitment to do. Eventually. I mean, it's it, right now the schedule is really tight, but I get a lot of what's the word um, satisfaction from helping people succeed. And it, it makes me feel like I'm contributing. Priscilla was talking about the six human needs, and one of them is growth and contribution. And when you get to a certain level, I'm not saying that I'm at any specific level because I don't want people to think that I'm thinking I'm better than them or not. But I do have a lot of wisdom to offer. That's actually my phone in the background that you're hearing that I need to turn off, not my iPad that I'm looking at. So this is something that both of us have had on the agenda for the year. I'm looking to open up my schedule in the next week and a half, but I will not take you unless you are hungry. Yeah. And that's that goes for Gabriel as well, I know, because I don't even get his advice or his coaching unless I'm 100% all in. Well, and think, guys, this is... Um the way that I'm positioning it is that of course it will be a a paid mentorship. So this will be a fee that we're charging. But the point is uh, we've, we've got a lot of information to offer. We're not, how can I put this delicately? We are not 
yet. We haven't arrived. And I don't think we'll ever arrive, so to speak. If you ever think that, Arn Anderson, uh, WWE producer once told me, he said, if you ever think, the, the oh, and he said, the moment you think you've arrived is the moment you failed. Because that means I'm there, I made it. I'm the best there is. I don't have to study. I don't have to work. I don't have to learn. I don't have to grow. We'll always be growing. But what I do have to offer is a lifetime of picking my ass up off the pavement and how to keep going. Multiple businesses that I have attempted and what went wrong with those businesses to bring me to Body Spartan to where we started with $20 in our pocket and grew it to a seven-figure business. That's the kind of stuff that we have to offer. So if people, if you're out there, guys, and you're interested, let's start seeing some comments uh, because I'm, I'm probably going to take on one or two people very soon uh, and mentor them through the next six months, even up to a year. But and we that, do, we do have fitness mentors. There's that. Well, yeah, but this Gabe, is not fitness mentorship. Gabe's focus is more on business aspects and personal empowerment. I have been called the up leveler. If you're ready to take your life from where you're at today and grow as a human being and get over your emotional crap and maybe understand things about yourself that you never understood, it's time to work. And we have everything within us to help you get there, but you have to be committed to yourself. So let's hear some comments. Let's hear what you guys think about that and what it is that you're desiring, what you're inspired to do over the next two to five years of your life. So we were talking about the different types of leaders, the six different types of leaders. And Priscilla had jumped in with the coach, you know, the coaching. Because that's such a visual. Yeah. Everybody had that coach. If you guys ever wondered, that's why I don't play baseball. I hate team sports because it was like, ah, Gabe, you dropped the ball. Gabe, blah, blah, blah. we're going to sit on the bench. See, Gabe and I do not deal well with negative reinforcement. If yeah. someone tells us we can't, we punch them in the face and we go do something else. That's pretty much how I've run my entire life. And actually, it's worked really well for me. Actually, you punch them in the face and you do exactly what they told you you couldn't. Yes, I yeah, do the exact yeah. opposite of what. Yeah, I, yeah. Tell, I don't know if you guys saw, but recently I posted on Instagram. It was just, a, it was a picture of me, and I just put on the the title. It said, "Please tell me again what I can't do," because that just fuels my fire. And I'm guarantee that a lot of you listening out there feel very similarly. When someone tells you you can't, there's two type of people, and one of them will get crushed, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, I can't. You're right. You you know you're better than me." And then there's the other kind of person who's like, you know, fuck you, I'm my own man or woman, and I'm going to do whatever I want, and I'm going to take all that energy that you just sunk into me, and I'm going to show you that I can do it, and guess what? I'm going to do it better than and you that, ever could. And that comes down to the way that you're assimilating and processing the, uh, the offense that has made its way to you, because some people use it as fuel. <laughs> I use it as fuel. I use it, everything as it fuel. It doesn't mean that you are a loser. No. If it makes you want to quit. Because when those words get inside your head, they become you unless you're able to transmute them. Well, what do I always say? Don't give a fuck about what other people think. But, you know, it's interesting because I remember public speaking and the teacher just laid into me so hard. And I was crushed for a long time. And when I decided, actually, I'm fantastic at public speaking. I don't know what's going on. And then I realized I was probably that cheerleader that was mean to her in school. She, she's like, oh, you're like that cheerleader that was mean to me in school. And so I'm going to crush you so that you can't hurt me. There is always something beneath what is being said. So if somebody is giving you crap, understand that they are really dealing with their crap. It has nothing to do with you. So rise, my friend. Well, that's the coaching. And the coaching type of leader isn't necessarily a negative one. We're just no, using that as an no, example. No, no, no. There's so many great coaches. But like Priscilla said earlier, uh, it's a facilitator that connects team members to the goal and you know, it helps dig for weaknesses and strength. They're great, great for rookies. And, and let's talk about the commanding leader because that's kind of like more along the line of that coach. The, doo -doo, baby, baby, baby. the commanding leader leads through fear and coldness and distance. And writes the ship with one action. That's, I, that's everybody's mm, boss in every corporate movie ever. But, <laughs> but there the have been moments. the of the world. <laughs> ah, totally. Oh, that's a really good Lumber example. Fucker. Now, Now, Gabe is an, a different type of leader, which we're going to get to. But this, he does have some of these attributes of commanding leader. Why? Because he is so driven and so 
piercing. When he meets a goal, he will smash anybody if they get in the way. He does this in a delicate way most of the times, but there have been times throughout our learning (laughs) process where he's like, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong, and he will completely redirect the ship with one swift, immediate action. Yeah. And it is powerful. I have Actually, it's kind of funny. Uh, Brian Fikes, our chief marketing officer, has been a guiding light to me. He's built several companies, and it's one of the reasons I pulled him on board. But he knows I just mow through things and goals and people and if it's like he's had to more than once been like whoa whoa bro bro just it's okay the guy made a mistake i'm like no but but see we hire people (laughs) thinking that they're going to be an entrepreneur like we are we're like what do you mean you're not taking immediate action like what do you mean you're not responsible for your own schedule like we don't know management is not necessarily our strong point we are brilliant (laughs) leaders we are fire starters but we are terrible babysitters let me tell you a story guys uh, about a company (laughs) that we hired to do some affiliate marketing for us and affiliate marketing if you guys are just getting started in creating your own business and you're becoming a leader affiliate marketing is great because it gives you an opportunity to put your products on a different platform aka it was one we were using called share a sale well basically we put our products up there Affiliates jump in, we offer some coupon codes, and they go market for us, which is really cool. So if you've got a product that works great, ShareASale was a platform we were using. We hired an agency that will remain unnamed because I had to send them a cease and desist. They have a name. <laughs> we're not going to share it with yeah, you. Yeah, we won't share it with you, but I will tell you that they're from back east. Um, I was debating on saying where they're from, but I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> oh, dear. <clears throat> uh, and so what happened is... The fans are We hired them Googling. for a fee, and they just drop the ball. And basically what, what they told us is they said, look, we'll work for a fee for the first two months to get everything set up. And then after that, we're totally commission based. So if you guys make, if we make above and beyond what you were making before, we're going to take a percentage. Of that. I'm like, dude, that's a great deal. That incentivizes you guys to work. Well, they just dropped the ball. Like they didn't do crap for the first two months. And Brian and I had to call and call and call and call. And then one day I get on the phone with these guys. I'm like, Hey, yo, what's up guys? You know, we need to get some forward movement on this. Yeah. When Brian was doing it, he was doing a way better job than you guys. And I'm paying you, you know, X amount of thousand dollars a month. What's going on? And like ice crystals are forming on their phones as he's talking. Uh, (laughs) Actually, it's the exact opposite is what happened. So they had a team of three or four guys on the phone and they just start talking. And I go to interject multiple times like, okay, well, that's good, guys. But blah, 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 blah. Like, I'm all guys. I'm the client, dude. Don't talk over me. And then at the end of this meeting, this phone conversation, I hear a phone ring on the conference call. And the the owner of the company picks up the phone and starts talking. <laughs> and I just, as soon as he hangs up the phone, I'm like, all right, I'll talk to you guys later, bye. And I hung up the, uh, I hung up the phone and I wrote this nice little email and basically said, one, don't ever talk over me again. I'm your client. If you talk over me, our business relationship is terminated. Two, do not ever pick up a cell phone and have another conversation while we're in a conference call. This is the only time I will say this. Either you guys are going to do the work or get the F out. So that was, that was one time. And then we were in Vegas recently. And we had a meeting, a business meeting, and the guy starts talking over me. And I look at Brian, and you, so I swore Brian's eyes got biggest plates, and I just saw him like carefully shaking his head no you know that little that little tiny shake you get where you hope nobody sees it but it's like don't 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 okay don't don't do it don't do it don't do it <gasps> we ended the meeting early <laughs> yeah i mean like, do not talk over me <laughs> so there is a, the study that was done on this because i get totally infuriated on people with talking over other people on people talking I over people oh yes it's so terrible. that's terrible that's worse so it's called reactance theory the theory of reacts reactance and reactance is a motiv- motivational reaction to offers or people when um, or regulations that threaten or eliminate specific behavioral freedoms so if you feel like your freedom Ooh. is being threatens then you have then the theory of reactance happens where you're like okay i gotta break free so that i can feel that freedom which i deserve because i'm a human being i wouldn't treat you that way so that's actually very very interesting um well that applies because i've i've had things like that happen i don't think that's specifically like removing a freedom from me i just think it was you don't care enough to recognize that i have input and you're not going to do business with me oh are you talking about the thing at the airport or or the the lawyer, Sh- lawyer, Sh- lawyer. Yeah, that was the one. 
yeah. well, well, he was <laughs> limiting your um, freedom of speech. Well, I thought that what he was saying was totally irrelevant to where I wanted to go and the whole point of the conversation. So all that being said, Priscilla was talking about the commanding leader. Uh, I don't think I lead through fear by any means, shape or form, Ooh, but I definitely write the I ship. Can I please You think disagree. I lead by fear? Okay, yes. I try never to lead by fear. You you don't anymore, but this is a part of who you used to be. You used to lead me in fear because you would get explosively angry. I did. When, for example, I wasn't organized. This man taught me how to cook, how to clean, how to take care of my crap, how to not be a hoarder. He brought me into adulthood. I mean, we've been together so long, and I'm embarrassed to say I was a complete slob when we first got together, and now I run such a tight ship. Bobby but pins everywhere. My guys. biggest motivation is having him, he doesn't react in an angry way. He's grown tremendously. He's a brand new person than he used to be, but I still have that fear inside of me saying, am I going to be in trouble? World. So I, I feel like there's been tre tremendous growth in you in that area, and uh, I applaud you, my friend. Thanks. Well, that's that's awesome. Yeah, I did used to lead by fear, and it doesn't work very good. It works for a short period of time, but ultimately, it's negative reinforcement. And, and you'll certain never... types of people don't react to that because you would punch them in the face. You're like, "Oh, you're trying to make me afraid? I'll choke you. <laughs> I'll snap your neck." Uh, yeah. And I'm like, I just want to make you happy. Yeah. Pleaser, well, so I'd... that worked well for me. <laughs> please, please clarify it. I never punched you in the teeth. Oh no, not even. <laughs> but see, I, I may was, have choked you a little bit and didn't punch you I in the teeth. I grew up in a home where my parents never raised their voice or spoke sternly to me. We all just like spoke very like quietly and calmly. And when Gabe would use his thundering voice, I was like, oh, it's the end of the world. So anyways, we've all grown so many ways. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the pace setting leader. Let's do it. Uh, high standard for the sake of team success. Light on guidance. So so when the we're goal talking is about the catalyst, that thing that goodness sake, I don't know. I just I, you you're know, a popular guy right apparently now. Apparently, everybody's calling me the 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 pace setter guys. Um, light on guidance. So basically, this is leading by example. And what I want you to take away from all this is that in these six different types of leaders, there are good things in there, and you know, not so good things. You got pros and cons for each one. So we need to take away the good things, and we're going to create our own kind of ultimate leader. And Gabe is our own definitely. Ultron. <laughs> Gabe is definitely a pace setting leader. He doesn't do any of this on purpose. This is just who he is. So he has sickening work ethic. I do. The man is driven. The man sets a goal, demolishes it, and expects all of us to meet the same goal. And we're motivated to because we respect him. And the mission is our, our the mission is our goal. And so he's not like sitting here micromanaging. We are led towards the same thing because we have the same goal in mind. And he's able to, I guess that's what it well, is like light on this guidance. Way. This is how every program, uh, this is the kind of the body Spartan way. I mean, there's more to me than just being a pace setting leader, but I lead by example. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows that. I, I go out there and I crush it. I expect other people to crush it as well. This goes back to me and my theory that when you're in the gym, you're strengthening your mind because you usually have a prescribed set of repetitions and sets that you need to do if you're following a program like Genesis, G2, Revolution, Unleashed, or any other fitness program out there. And it's your will that will get you through that. It's your why, your driving force behind everything that you do that will tell your brain, I'm going to succeed or I'm going to fail. And in fact, and that hurts, why eliminates whale. What, oh, I'm sorry. The, I hate the when why, whales are at the gym. The why like, eliminates so the will. So much water and it there's just spray you. everywhere. Those whales, yeah. I know. It's a problem. And, uh, and what, what I'm getting at is that you're forging an iron will. You either, well, you, actually, you either are or you aren't forging an mm. iron will. You're, you're working towards a goal and if you, you, you learn to succeed, you learn to push yourself past the wall as we call it, and knock out those last couple reps and maybe even do some more, you're gonna unlock a whole nother part of you. Now, what that comes down, no, oh geez, what was I talking about here? I totally lost my train of pace setting leader. Um, oh, light on guidance. So you guys will see that I give guidance. Our motivational videos give guidance. And when we're in the gym and we do our Facebook videos and our IG videos, we give some guidance, but it's not exactly how to do everything step by step. We're leading by example. When you get into one of our programs, we we'll hold your hand. It's a different story. 
and we have all the information there for you. So, you know, when we're pulling you in and we're trying to change your life, we're leading by example. Oh, shoot. Are you ready for this? This is culture. This is creating culture. Because when you have that culture, it's an expectation. It's a standard that has been set. And this is something that Gabe and I very much value in our parenting style. We're, we use fewer words and more of an example. This is how we treat each other. This is how we treat others. The speed of the leader determines the speed of the pack. Yeah, if you're gonna make a note, let's, let's start making some notes here, guys. Say, everybody get out your phone and tweet that. Yeah, speed right. Speed of the leader, speed of the pack. Speed of the leader, speed of the pack. I, I mean, we, we say that all the time. And here, we're going to start doing some takeaways here. And you don't necessarily have to be light on guidance because we do give a lot of guidance in our programs. But this like is Genesis one and G2, aspect of leadership. Revolution, like I was saying, Unleashed. We give tons of guidance. But setting the pace. Set the bar so high that people will want to join you that show them that you can accomplish this like maybe this goes back to me saying that everybody has a unique story and your story will set the pace and i do want to touch on one other thing there there also needs to be a set point now gabe's set point almost feels unreasonably high but that is why our videos are so good that is why our brand ambassadors are so powerful that is why when we promise we're going to do something, we do it because we refuse to drop below the set point. Same thing with our jeans. If they don't fit, that's a set point. It's time to lose some weight. If we drop below a certain number, that's not okay. It doesn't match the set point. So keep that in mind with a, with a pace setting leader. All right. Another type of leader, demogra- democratic, <laughs> democratic leader. Uh, gets investment we're not the- getting political so right this, now. This but kind of person like- will get investment from team members by asking for input and they're very highly organized. Take this away, guys. Democracy is great. When you're being a leader, if you hesitate and you wait and you bank on everybody's input, it's good to get input, but if you sit there and everybody votes and we should do this, we should, shit's not gonna get done. It's just not gonna get done. And part of being a leader is having the ability to listen to the needs of your team and make an educated decision, an executive decision that will continuously steer the ship in the right direction or what you believe is the right direction. As a leader, You have to be someone that is confident in your decision, whether it is right or whether it is wrong. At that moment, you believe it's right. And if you fail, then you freaking fail. Who cares? You get up, you try again, and you tell your team members, this is what I thought was right. It didn't work. We're going to go in a different direction. If it is right, then boom, guess what? You're golden. The idea here is to make decisions with confidence, just like you believe in yourself when you're in the gym. You believe in your why. You believe you're going to make your reps and your sets and you're going to make a change in your life. You have to believe in every decision that you make. Yes, team member input is highly valued. And the way that they feel and the way that you take care of them is highly valued. But you have to, have to, have to, have to be 100% confident in every decision that you make as a leader. Take the input. Sit on it, make an executive decision and push forward and say, guys, thank you for your input. I have carefully considered all of the options and this is the direction we're going to go. And I need your support on this. That's being a leader. I don't know why I get emotional thinking about this topic. Um, I'm just so proud of the way that you are such a balance of all of these things. Oh, thanks. Being, being a democratic leader, I'm gonna give you an example of what Gabe does, and yes, he is incredibly highly organized. I bet a lot of you think he's just a meathead. The man is brilliant. He's got an engineering degree. I mean, he is so organized and so on top of it. Now, as far as getting other people's input, he asked you for input. He said, what do you guys think? What do you guys want? But he doesn't sit there waiting for all the answers to come in and then tallying them up. He does what he feels intuitively is the best because he is divinely led. He is he knows the answer, but he takes that input into account because he loves you guys. He cares about you and he cares about how the flow goes. So there is such a balance to um, democratic leadership. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Uh, another one. Affiliate leader. 
Connects team members, couples, counselor kind of deal, works not to let each other down. So, Pete, why don't you explain this one? So, um, affiliates, affiliate leader is an example is like a marriage counselor. They have mad husband and mad wife on opposite sides of the table. And they're saying, let's find an agreement. Let's find a way to work together so that we can come out with a, a, a outcome that feels great to everybody. Not much to talk about when it comes to the affiliate leader. It's pretty straightforward. And I want to move on in the sake of time. There is one more. And we saved our favorite for last. You're yeah. welcome. There is one more. And I got some tips for you guys too as well. But I, I think it's important to understand these six different types of leaders so that, again, you can pull stuff out of every single one. And let's just kind of recap. We had the coaching leadership or the coaching leader who facilitates and connects team members to the goal, helps them dig for weaknesses and strength, and is great for rookies. So this is kind of like your cheerleader of a leader. We have the pace setting leader high standard for the sake of team success and is light on guidance. And the takeaway from that that I gave you guys, that we gave you guys, was to set the pace. Priscilla said speed of the leader, speed of the pack. The third one is the commanding leader. Leads through fear, cold distance, rights the ship with one action. I do not recommend ever leading with fear. I recommend leading by example, but I do recommend steering the ship back in the right direction with one singular action. This is that executive decision and I was clar- talking about. And clarification of consequences. There are definitely consequences. You embezzle, you're fired. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you go to jail. <laughs> Which also segues into the democratic leader. So this is a person who gets the investment of team members by asking for input and is highly organized. Again, input is highly valued. And your decision as a leader with whatever it is, if you're building a team, if you're building a business, if you're getting a bunch of people together to work out in the gym, get their, get their input. Then be confident in your decision. Consider the options. Make a confident decision, whether it's right or wrong. You have to steer that ship. And you're going to tell everybody which direction you're going. That's the democratic leader. The affiliate leader connects team members together, kind of like the marriage counselor does. Finally, the visionary leader. Speak to desire to be a part of something bigger. Rally people emotionally. Now when Gabe talks, you listen. And you don't know why, but you just wanna do what he says. That, my friends, is a visionary leader. It's there, something that just compels you, it's the movement, it's the that, action. It's you, the, you said it, movement. And the culture, movement. yes. I'm. For those of you that don't know, many of you do. I'm a huge fan of the X Files. I've watched the series since I was a kid. And it was it was cool. Like when it came out, it was epic, and it was all about this one guy's. For anybody that doesn't know what the X Files about, it's one guy's vendetta to find the truth, like what's out there. And it was about alien stuff. It was a sci fi thing, but there was a a really cool quote from the uh, what do we call the not the hero. It's uh, Man, I'm such a loss for <laughs> this, this hero versus villain. Uh, you're the villain, but um, protagonist. That's the word mm. I'm looking for. Uh, the protagonist, the big protagonist in the series, they were talking about killing off Mulder, the main character. And he said, you can kill the man, but you can't kill the movement. Mm. So he didn't die. But the point of that is when you have a vision And it's more than just making money and it's more than being selfish or something that is selfish. And in fact, it's the exact opposite. It's selfless. You have a selfless vision that you want to spread. You are creating a movement. You are creating something bigger than yourself and the masses that can relate to your vision and relate to your cause will rally behind you. Not because you are trying to sell them anything or force them to do anything, but it's because they are emotionally attached to you. I've said it before, I'll say it again, Body Spartan's vision is to change one life every single day, no matter what the cost. And I got another tweetable for you. Tweetable. Leaders eat last. You stand in the back of the line when you are leading. 
It is not a way to find your significance. Being a leader is a servant's position. That doesn't mean that you're going to be everybody's doormat. It means that you are leading a tribe, putting their needs as priority. Leaders shouldn't sit there like dictators and have everything done for them. Although, don't get me wrong, at a certain point in a business or wherever you are in your tribe, so to speak, the leader will have higher responsibilities that he or she is very good at and their time should be most spent there. However, somebody like me, I ain't afraid to get my hands dirty. I have no problem helping Sean set up camera equipment. I have no problem jumping in and doing the dirty work that needs to be done. Not that camera works dirty work, but I'm just saying any dirty work, like, you know, whatever. If I'm checking social media, dude, if we need help, I'm checking social media. You because guys will, he is also a pace setting leader. You guys will see sometimes you get comments from me and I'll tell people, hey, this is Gabe. By the way, I'm on social for the next hour. I'm checking in. I want to see what you people need. I want to see what you guys want. I want to I want to know the comments. I want to know the direction the ship is being steered in. Do not be afraid to be humble because that makes you relatable. And please don't take this the wrong way as if I'm trying to tell you how to control people because I'm not. I'm trying to tell you how to be an excellent leader. Don't be afraid to be humble. One of the first things I learned in WWE, and this was great. We'll have to pause here in a couple seconds. Got to take a phone call and then we'll jump back in. But when when I got to the, the training center, I was thinking like, okay, cool. I, I pretty much made it. They trained us. We go to TV. Oh, no, nah, man. We had to run indie shows. So we would go to these little crap bar shows so that we could get experience in front of crowds. Sometimes there were three people in the audience. Sometimes there were a thousand. A lot of times it was like a hundred. <laughs> the point is there was no ring crew. We, the wrestlers, the talent, we had to set up the whole freaking ring by ourselves. There was a ring truck. One of the coaches drove it. And then somebody had to get their butt inside that tiny little trailer in Floridian weather with, you know, 90% humidity in dress clothes and instruct everybody and help everybody pull every piece of wood and iron and steel out of there and then continue to set the ring. And somebody had to be in there to set it all where it needed to be on the way back. Talk about humility. I learned very quickly that being a leader involved getting your hands dirty because within a couple months time I was the guy in the ring truck saying all right guys let's do this let's here give me that I'll put that here I'll put that there you know and when people walked away and went home guess who got to clean everything up me you know it's funny it reminds me of um, my fitness modeling career too because we would sit there and do autographs and there would be some girls that were just too good to sign autographs and they're like oh, mm, ah, it's the best part I and, love it and then there were those of us that engaged the fans and we'd take pictures with the kids and we'd interact with the people. Guess who got called back for more signings? Leaders eat last. Speed of the leader. Speed of the pack. Definitely speed of the leader. Speed of the pack. Priscilla, I know you got to you bring up a good point. You brought one up earlier about power and leadership and not to let it be confused where being in the position of a leader is not to be confused with being powerful because nobody wants to follow a tyrant. Nobody wants to follow a dictator. They want to believe in that person that their leader is going to bring them to the promised land. It's going that that person has what it takes to get their followers from where they are now to whatever their goal is and to do it confidently and to do it without tyranny, to do it in love and encouragement. That's what people are really looking for. Absolutely. Gabe and I have a, a friend that got beat up in high school a ton. His dad was very abusive to him. He graduated from high school with super low self-confidence. He felt like nobody listened to him. He felt like nothing was in his favor because he didn't like who he was. He had low self-confidence. So he decided to go into the police force. Because then he could make people listen to them. Then he could make people obey because he had a gun. And that gave him a power that turned him into somebody that was just very hungry for that control factor in his life. 
And that's something to watch out for as a leader. Do you have things that you need to work through before you lead other people? That's, and I, I would like to put out there that Priscilla and I fully support our boys in blue out there. We've got oh lots of goodness, friends so on much. the force. We know that if you're out there and you're one of our officers, you guys got our support. We love you. We fully recognize uh, that media tends to blow things out of proportion, but I also recognize and that there are some things that case. need to change. I, I, I really this is want, a rare case. yeah, I really want people to fully understand that because uh, this is a very sensitive subject Absolutely. right now. That yes, I recognize things need to change. There are definitely a lot of incidences where our boys in blue don't do things correctly, but there are also a lot of incidences where they do do things correctly and they're sticking. There's good people out there that are sticking their neck out there every single day to protect us and keep us safe. So. I, I don't want to dive into that controversy because I don't think it's one that can be won uh, on either side of the battle. And we're only going to piss people off by talking about that. But just know that we respect what you do. We respect our boys in blue. Uh, and that conversational piece wasn't meant in any derogatory oh, way. Oh, not even a little bit. Just this as, was just one example. It's the same thing as the supermodel that didn't want to sign an autograph or kiss a baby. Goodness sakes. Yeah. It's, it's like a power and, and kind of a control factor. And then people will put you as a leader. They will put you on the other side of the fence. And there's something that is called mob mentality. They will gang up against you and you will lose. You must allow yourself to be vulnerable as a leader. Open, honest, raw, authentic. Because otherwise you're going to find yourself alone. Indeed. And nobody likes to be alone. I've, I've seen all different types of leaders over my day. And I think that's part of the reason that I determined the kind of leader that I want to be because I've seen what works and what doesn't work. And I know what specifically doesn't work with me and tyranny doesn't work with me. Fear doesn't work with me. Um, a, a distant cold leader does not work with me. And I don't think it works with a lot of people. I see the leaders being people that truly care and that are selfless the leaders, like Priscilla said, are the ones that eat last. And you have to ask yourself this question. Do I have what it takes? Do I want to be a leader? And if you don't feel like you have what it takes, you can earn that. You can read the books. 24 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership is a great place to, to start. Think and Grow Rich, another great place to start because being rich isn't just about money. It is about a wealth emotionally so those are two great books to start with and And there's so many great podcasts on leadership too there are and for those of you who are new to the podcast let me briefly touch on this thing called pd which is personal development and in personal development this is where you take a dedicated amount of time every single day and you take and put good stuff into your brain instead of all this negative shit that you see on media and social media and tv and all that crap take time whether it's on your drive to work whether it's on your drive home from work, whether you're doing dishes or making breakfast in the morning, you can always plug in your earbuds with your iPhone or your Android in your pocket. There's always time. And personal development can be any type of motivational stuff. So, and it's self-improvement is really what it's about. Listen to things on how to be a leader. Listen to things on how to be successful. Listen on things on self-help, awareness. Double down on your personal development time and watch your life change. Again, I believe that everybody has the innate ability to lead, but I believe a lot of it's been squished. Uh, But I also believe that there are a lot of people out there that don't want to be leaders, that want to be led, that want to believe in something, believe in someone. And those people need a leader. And that could be you because you have this unique, special story. And as much as I say, you know, you're not a special snowflake, in this case, you, you are. You, you really are. You are a special snowflake because you got a unique story that nobody else has. You have a unique viewpoint on what's happened to you. And you can share that and you can take people by the hand and walk them through the same process that you went through. And this is one of the reasons that I started the Spartan Army. The Spartan Army started off as our membership section, our, you know, our gold members or platinum members, so to speak. And now it has become so much more. Not only do we give you all this incredible content to help you on with your journey every single week, you guys get 
a workout in a workout video. You get a recipe and a recipe video. Actually, you get two. You get one for cutting and one for bulking. You get a fitness tip from one of our brand ambassadors every week, and you get a motivational video every single week. And you know how important motivation is. This is what drives you. So we give that all to you. Then on top of that, we give you a once a month call. And actually, I, next week, I think I got the call. It's the second Monday of every month. I got the call next week. So I'm going to be talking to you guys for 45 minutes, or even longer sometimes, on a very specific topic. And you get one-on-one time with me or with Priscilla, depending on who's doing the call that week. You get a video call, uh, and you can basically, we'll bring you up, we'll, you ask all your questions when we're done, and we can show your, your video, you can talk directly to us. It's an amazing group. But I took it one step further. And this is my way of saying thank you. Is anybody that signs up for the Spartan Army, first of all, gets a 30-day free trial. So you guys get access to all this cool stuff for 30 days at no charge. You can see how cool it is and how epic the content is and how much it's going to help you on your journey. But you also have the opportunity to become an affiliate. We call them our coaches. You can be a Body Spartan coach. And you can walk people through the same process that you have done. All your blood, sweat, and tears in the gym on your transformation process, on your journey that began with one single step in the right direction, you now have the ability to turn around and give that to people. And what we're encouraging people to do is to use this affiliate program to basically, and I'm not going to lie, it's going to help Body Spartans. We're going to make money off of it. But it's going to give you an opportunity and us to give back to you. We're going to give you a percentage of everything that's sold. So if you go out there and you encourage someone to buy the Genesis G2 Unleashed or Revolution program or any product on the site that's going to help them, you get a percentage of that sale. Every single sale. And yes, we talked about an affiliate leader. This is affiliate marketing. But it's your opportunity to give back. And it's my opportunity to give back to you and give you something, a piece of Body Spartan, It's your chance to be a leader. And this is an example of you being a democratic leader because this is what the people have asked for. It was not convenient for us to set this up. It is not in our best favor because we're giving away most of our profit. But most cases, yeah. We want to give the people what they want as much as possible. We hear you. I'm, I'm, let me back up. This is actually a great opportunity to take a piece of every single one of these leadership types that we talked about. Democratic leader, yes. Be a pace setter. Speed of the leader, speed of the pack. Uh, You can be that commanding leader who steers the ship with one single action. You can be the coach. Somebody that coaches people through this, step by step and holds their hand. Like I said, it's great for rookies. But this is your opportunity to go onto social media, share your story, share your before pictures and your after pictures. Great point. How did I forget about this? Oh my gosh. Vulnerability. By sharing your before and after pictures, you are putting your real self out there. Mm. And vulnerability in a leader, you don't want to show people that you're vulnerable, but you want to show them the truth. I don't show people that I'm vulnerable because I don't believe people will follow me if they think I'm weak. And not weak in the gym, but just weak minded. But I will say I fail all the time. And I will be as vulnerable as possible when it comes to being my true self and showing the truth about where I came from, where I am, the mistakes that I make daily, the big mistakes I've made, how I write them, how I was feeling at that time. I have no problem being 100% transparent. I don't think that makes me vulnerable. I don't think that makes me weak. I think it it's allows people- It's not a good people, word to say. It's like about being authentic. There's a good that's word. That's a much better word. Or, or real and raw. But the truth is, none of us truly have- vulnerability because we can be in a state of mind where we believe in ourselves no matter what anybody else thinks about us true we are so solid you my friend you are invulnerable you are unable to be touched that's a that's great. an inside job but do be authentic do be and I, and I did use the word vulnerable and it just didn't sit well with me earlier but I like that we've artic- articulated it a little bit better it is authenticity it is raw it is real You are being your authentic self for the purpose of connection with these hearts, 
that are waiting and longing and begging for the answers that only you have. So share your story. Be authentic. And Be I real. Am, Be I, transparent. And I am going to give a little shout out right now to Crystal. Um, I'm going to call her Crystal G because I don't know how to say her last name. G-E-I-T-G-E-Y. How do you say that? I don't know. But Crystal G, I am super pumped for her. Um, she sent me some before and after pictures. She's lost 21 pounds wow. um, on her first round of revolution. And she's getting ready to start round two on the program. And so, Crystal, congratulations. You are a leader. Thank you for posting in our girls group. Your photographs are so inspirational. And I have a little gift on its way to you. I'm proud of you. And for those of you that are not familiar with Revolution, this is our female fitness shredding program. And it's helping women meet their most exhilarating fitness dreams. Just watching it happen is mind blowing in and of itself. And we've got a community, we meet online. This is a simple, simplified plan for rapid fat loss in a 12 week period of time. And it takes all the guesswork out of the ketogenic nutrition plan, as well as including a bunch of my secrets that I learned throughout my fitness modeling career and getting ready for photo shoots. It includes um, the rapid fat loss cardio techniques, the dynamic weight training. Um, you know, it's not just a fitness routine. It's a total life transformation. And these women are being changed. And I'm proud of you. And we're looking to recognize more of you, not only on the podcast, but in all aspects of social media, because we want your stories out. You are motivating other people. We share a lot of the secrets of neurohacking that the fitness industry has never revealed before. So those of you ladies that are crushing it with revolution, I'm so proud of you. And I love every single one of you. Same to the guys. So look at look at it this way, guys. If you're just getting started, revolution for the ladies. Genesis G2 for the guys. Unleashes our bulking program. If you're ready to be a leader and you're ready to take on a little more and you're ready to give back, Spartan Army is where we want you to be. Not only to get all this awesome content, but you get this opportunity to give back. If you want a free trial of the Spartan Army, www.bodyspartan.com forward slash Spartan Army. And trust me, guys, you're going to want this free 30-day trial. It's going to change your life. I promise you. So I'm going to leave you with this. We have choices. Everybody has a choice. You can lead or you can follow. Which kind of person are you? Talk to you next week, guys. For more free information on fitness, nutrition, and bodybuilding, visit us at www.bodyspartan.com. I'm a man with a plan, understand.